Hello, this is Ati. In this video, I'll be showing you how to convert a PC power supply unit into a bench power supply. I do not have any sort of association with any companies mentioned in this video. If I mention dollar currency in my videos, it is Canadian dollars, unless I state otherwise. When I was preparing this video, it became very long, over 24 minutes, and I divided it into two parts. Enjoy watching the video. This is my first adapter that I was using for my smaller projects. Long time ago, I bought it for $11.99. You can set the voltage to six different values, like 3, 4.5, 6, 7.5, 9, and 12 volts. It is one amp maximum. It came with six interchangeable circuits for different leads. Then one day I lost it. By losing, I mean I could not find where I put it. I found it later on. After losing the first adapter, I went ahead to buy another adapter. This adapter has also changeable voltage values from 1.5, 3, 4.5, 6, 7.5, 9, and 12. It is 18 watts and 1 ampere. This one cost me 750. Uh, it has different sizes of sockets on it and I cut one of them that I did not need. I added a socket that I could use. I was using this adapter mostly for my Arduino projects with the breadboard. Uh, this is another old adapter. Then we have this power supply unit. It is a power supply unit from an old ATX PC case. This I've been using for many years. It served me really well. I added the power switch to it so we can turn it on and off. This power supply unit will turn into this power supply unit. I saw many people converting their PC power supplies into workbench power supplies. I've been planning for it a few years now. I was waiting for the parts that were ordered, some parts I just received them recently. While waiting for the parts, I found some other plans to build my own workbench power supply unit. This week, I received all the parts needed for the second power supply. That will be the workbench power supply version 2. For this project, I was trying to cover the back as well. I did not want to cause extra heat in the box, so I did not close the back of the box. I have some ideas for version 1.1 where I like to add a few things to this unit. I might um, just give it up and focus on my second unit. Let's get busy. Let's plug two alligator clips to my multimeter, one for the red and the other for the black. And put them aside for now. And now we will cut some cables, we do not need the sockets for this project. Let's trim the cables. Let's make uh, batches of cables. In my case, the black cable is ground. The red is 5.1 volts. The green cable, once it is short circuited with the black, it turns the power supply unit on. This cable set will be used for the power switch. As for these cable sets, I have no idea what they are for. The orange cable is 3.35 volts. The yellow cable is 12 volts. I'll not be using the yellow cable with the black stripes, which is the minus 12 volts. Let's design the acrylic case. First, we will take measurements of the power supply units. Those are the measurements that I'll be using. Place the acrylic sheet, acrylic sheet workbench. Draw on the acrylic sheet what we have measured earlier. The part one will look like this.
and we will cut the parts that we marked earlier. It's time to glue the parts together. I'm using Le Page Contact Cement as glue, which is very strong. I'm using my power supply as a template to determine how the parts need to be glued. I use the clamps to keep the glued parts still. Where the axes are marked we will dr start drilling the holes there. We will drill 12 holes, 3 holes for each 3 voltages, 12, 5.1, 3.35 volts, and uh, 3 holes for the ground. In each hole, we will place the female banana binding post. The males will go to the cables. Once those are done, we will drill a bigger hole bigger where we will place the power switch. For the hole of the power switch, I drilled many holes to open that space up, which looks quite ugly. To fix that, we will use coated step drill bits. Let's place the power switch to its hole. As you see, there are many gaps around it. To seal it, we will use a hot glue gun. It's time to install the female binding posts to the front panel. Once it is done, this is what we get. See you in part 2.